Welcome back to FAIR TV. I'm Janine Jackson. Have you heard the one about how Russian President Vladimir Putin is out of touch with reality? Delusional even? That storyline has been everywhere in corporate media coverage of the Ukraine crisis. But if you trace it back to its origin, it starts to seem more like a game of telephone, which it was. The story begins at the New York Times, which flagged a phone conversation between Barack Obama and German Chancellor Angela Merkel. After speaking with Mr. Putin, she was not sure he was in touch with reality, people briefed on the call said. In another world, she said. Many media accounts promoted this out-of-touch spin. In another world, she said. Is this an unstable individual, Mr. Putin? Oh, do you believe this guy is delusional? The media's attraction to this talking point was critiqued in a remarkable piece by McClatchy's David Seibel. He noted that the German press were reporting that Merkel's point was only that Putin had a different view on Crimea. An obvious point, perhaps, and one with little of the propaganda value of the take the U.S. media were promoting. As Seibel put it, if the New York Times says he's crazy, that's good enough for the dozens of reporters who've come along since, repeating the comment to their millions of viewers and readers as if it was a confirmed statement. Along with a bevy of right-wingers, including Paul Ryan and Dick Cheney, the March 9th Face the Nation on CBS featured retired General Jim Jones, who was once Barack Obama's national security advisor. He was asked about Ukraine and energy. Now, if yesterday, four countries sent letters to uh, Speaker Boehner and I think uh, the majority leader in the Senate, uh, that's Poland, Hungary, uh, Czech Republic, and uh, Slovakia. Uh, asking the United States to accelerate its uh, shipments of energy to Eastern Europe in particular. This just underscores the fact that in a long, in a, in a long term and maybe even midterm mm -hmm. scenario, uh, our energy potential has, a, has a, the capacity of lowering uh, the dependence of Europe on Russian energy and therefore affecting the economic viability of, of Russia for a long term. Using energy as a political weapon is nothing new, although media seem to feel differently about it depending on who's doing it. A recent Washington Post editorial slammed Russia for using energy as a political cudgel. U.S. efforts to do the same thing are met with a shrug or even encouragement. That sort of double standard is par for elite media's course, as unfortunately are undisclosed conflicts of interest. You see, Jones isn't just a retired general. As BuzzFeed reported, he's a top lobbyist for the American Petroleum Institute and the U.S. Chamber of Commerce with a focus on Keystone. So he's paid by the oil and gas industry to promote their priorities, which include more gas drilling. But CBS viewers weren't told that, even as he was brought on to talk about energy policy. And finally, good news. We're all rich again. And we have a sign of a comeback in these rocky financial times. Today we learned that the net worth of all American households jumped by nearly $10 trillion last year, now at $80 trillion, a new record high. And here's the March 7th front page of USA Today, to which the vast majority of people might respond, huh? You know there's a but coming, and sure enough it does. But the gains since the crisis have not been equally distributed. Most of the recovered wealth has come from higher stock prices, and many Americans are not in the market. The wealthiest 10% of Americans owns 80% of stocks. So the story is an increase in the value of stocks that most people don't own. Yet the headline uses the word we. You get the feeling that USA Today knows this is a problem, and they try to fudge it in their conclusion. Sure, that wealth may not be yours, but the economy benefits because people spend more when they feel richer. The trouble is, it's hard for people to feel richer when they're not, despite all the headlines telling them so. And if outlets like USA Today saw their audience as the overwhelming majority of the population that are struggling to get by, one could imagine a very different story on that concentration of wealth. I'm Janine Jackson. Thanks for watching FAIR TV.